Tomorrow, when we vote in the Electoral College, I'll be putting forward a motion to, in fact, uh, call for a bipartisan, independent commission to investigate uh, Russian interference. The vote will proceed in all the state capitals, including in Rhode Island, and I fully expect that Donald Trump will be formally elected as president tomorrow. But you that was Clay Pell, an Electoral College member and a Democrat from Rhode Island, talking about his expectations for tomorrow's vote, the final word in the 2016 presidential race. Joining me now is Richard Berfault, law professor at Columbia and an expert in election law. Thank you for being with me. As we just heard, sir, from Clay Pell, he said what he's going to do is he's going to ask for this motion for a bipartisan investigation, and then the votes will be will proceed forward and he expects Donald Trump. But can he do that? Can he ask for that mention uh, as far as um, a bipartisan investigation? I suspect he can ask for it. Uh, it's never happened before as far as I know, but this has been a year of very unusual developments in, in the presidential election. So I think he should certainly feel free to ask. Okay, so wh what do you expect will happen tomorrow? How does this normally work and what could sure. happen tomorrow? Well, normally the electors meet in each of the 50 state capitals plus the District of Columbia. There is no one giant gathering the Electoral College. They actually meet in their home states, usually in the state capital, and they cast their votes. Um, sometimes it may be known in some states, it might be known how they vote, and sometimes it just gets, in fact, a sealed envelope. Secretary of State or some state official checks it out, certifies it, and sends it on to Washington. But then you have, in this case, the growing pressure to convince pro-Trump electors to vote against Donald Trump tomorrow. So it, in your opinion, what is the likelihood of that happening? It's hard. It's impossible to say. I mean, in, every, in basically half the elections we've had, one, sometimes a little bit more than one, elector will vote in a way that was not predicted, not, not for the person whom they're pledged. But it's very unusual. The electors are almost always people who are party professionals or elected officials who are quite loyal to their party. So mm -hmm. it would be, it's very unusual uh, for electors to not vote the way they're supposed to vote. Right. Every now and then one will. We've had a couple of announcements already this year of one or two electors saying they're not going to vote the way they, I say supposed to, the way they're pledged to vote. Uh, but it's been very, very, very unusual for more than that. Now, what would you have to say when we just heard there from Clay Pell in asking for this motion for an investigation, but he expects Donald Trump to win? So, so what is the point? That's a good question. Um, in some ways, he's taking advantage of the original idea of the Electoral College, which was that the very original idea was that they were supposed to be prominent people from their states who had judgment, who would deliberate, and who would make a decision. And so I think he's taking advantage of the platform he has as an elector, as the person who's the official vote for his state, to say, we, ought to, we want this investigation. Well, let's talk about this. Is, has there been any precedence before in efforts like this when it comes to the Electoral College and doing something that is essentially a formality, procedural? It's not, not really, no. And, and the Electoral College has, as you say, been largely procedural for almost since the beginning. Uh, it was originally designed, designed to be something where there would be deliberation and debate. But as soon as we developed a party system, it became largely an instrument of the parties and as a reflection of the votes in their home states. Yeah. So uh, we haven't seen anything like this before. Well, given that, uh, how's this hypothetical? What happens if Donald Trump doesn't reach 270? Donald Trump doesn't reach 270, it goes to the House of Representatives. And then what? Well, then the, House, the states vote uh, state by state, one vote per state. Uh, that has happened twice in our history, where, where one person did not get a majority. Uh, in, currently, I believe the, the incoming House will have um, Republicans and majorities in more than half the states. Mm -hmm. So the odds are the Republicans will pick the next president, uh, but they would do it in the House, voting yeah. state uh, by very state. Very quickly, sir, you're an expert in election law. What's your reflections in seeing something like this and what normally should be procedural, quick, automatic, yeah. and now where it's making news and we're talking about it? Well, I think we've got here is the tension between our 18th century Constitution and our 21st century democracy. Uh, the Constitution was written one way with one set of expectations, and we've developed a whole different set of practices. And every now and then, the Constitution as written comes, uh, is, is put side by side with the practices we have, and they don't fit together very well. Yeah, we just kind of, you know, the playbook was thrown out for the campaign, the election, and, and maybe the Electoral College here. Exactly. Uh, we're talking about this. Richard Rafal, thank you so much for My being pleasure. here. My pleasure. If Russia is behind hacking in the United States election, then how'd they do it? Coming up, I'll talk to a man who was once a notorious hacker and is now a computer security expert.